Hello, welcome to Gospel in Action. God's judgment was on the people of the city of Babel and hence he confused their languages and scattered them across the world fulfilling his purpose. We have seen this in the last video. We know that because of that judgment, God created at least 78 languages. Let us see in this video what happened that we see almost 7,000 spoken languages today in the current world. Let us also learn in brief about the current religions of the world. Now let us get to the video. If you are a first time visitor, then I request you to please hit that like button to support us with this mission. If the videos are helpful, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to not miss another video. Note that the subscription is free. As I said, currently there are approximately 7,000 spoken languages in the world. Languages do change over time and yes, all these 7,000 languages originated from God who is the originator of the first language. How is that? We know that from the first language approximately 78 languages originated because of God's judgment on Babylon, the world at that time. So. Apart from the first language of God, God created at least 78 new languages as a result of judgment on the people of the world. This is the second major judgment after the global flood that affected all the inhabitants of the world at that time. According to the book of Revelation, the third judgment should be the final judgment of God where he would annihilate every wicked person and save only those who are righteous in his sight. Note that righteous does not mean sinless. Every man is born with sin and that cannot be changed. However, there were righteous people throughout human history who acknowledged their sins, sought forgiveness from their creator and walked with God through faith. In the new covenant, we know that Jesus' sacrifice provided a permanent way for all people to walk with God in peace forever. Only the righteous people with non-hypocrite hearts who claimed the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ for themselves will ultimately be part of the new earth and the new heaven. Anyway, out of all the present 7,000 languages, there are several languages today that comprise a single language family. And of course, the total of all these language families would be around 78 when traced back to its roots. This means that all the languages we have today are inherently part of only those 78 languages which God created originally as a result of his judgment. Let us learn about this in some detail. Let us read Genesis chapter 10 and verse 25. To Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided and his brother's name was Jokton. This verse indicates to us when exactly the earth was divided and what is the first language of our world. The first language of the world, that is God's language, had no name until Eber, who is the great grandson of Noah's son Shem. So they had to name the first language as now there are many languages and they named it after Eber, the elder in the city when the earth was divided. Eber and Hebrew come from the same word in Hebrew, just like Yeshua and Jesus. So, Hebrew was the first language through which God communicated with Adam and Eve. Although Hebrew is God's language, there was no requirement for us to learn and keep it holy like other religions. Any language is just a medium to communicate. 
As God's children, we hence have the freedom to communicate with God in whatever language we understand and speak because God is omniscient and hence knows all languages. Anyway, Hebrew also became the language family of Arabic, the Ammonite language, the Moabite language, Aramaic, which was the language of Jesus, etc. In the present day, there are companies that did research and were able to identify certain language family groups to which they can attribute all the current 7,000 languages into. In other words, they work their way backward from the existing 7,000 languages and were able to identify several root languages. To the scientists' surprise, the Bible is pretty accurate because the estimates according to Vistavide and Ethnologue companies are 94 and 120 respectively. This is one more absolute proof that the Bible is written by the inspiration of the Spirit of God. Further, the company Vistavide predicts that over 96% of the Earth's inhabitants or 5.5 billion people speak a language in the top 10 language families. This include Hebrew, Egyptian, Greek, Lithuanian, Chinese, Tamil, Sanskrit, Korean, Farsi or Persian, Basque, etc. So now, let me ask you this question. Is it possible for 7,000 languages to be developed by man from about a minimum of 78 root languages in 4,000 years? Absolutely. And you know what? The Bible says that though there are many different languages in the world, none is without meaning according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 10. This actually means that God has a purpose on why he allowed these many languages to exist. Incredible, isn't it? However, the sad part is that man is slowly destroying this diversity that God has created. God intended Intended all people to diversify the earth and live within their nations and not interfering in the affairs of other nations. As I said, the whole world is becoming smaller and smaller as man makes strides in technology. Ever since English was forced to be the first language of the world because of the British colonization across the world, communications with other nations and other cultures have become easier than ever before. This was made much easier with the advent of the internet. The world will become even smaller with the arrival of internet of things and virtual reality. Advances in transportation will make it possible to travel from one end of the world to the other end in just a few hours. It would not be an exaggeration to say that within the next two or three generations, the world will again come to the sinful state of Babel, where the world will be ruled by one government, speak one language, and build something analogous to the Tower of Babel to show their pride and defy God together once again. Just like how the second judgment fell on the ancient city of Babel, the third and the ultimate judgment of God will take place before man's plan of pride and identity come to fruition. However, the righteous people living in this world like us will use the language for the expansion of the kingdom of God on earth. Even the apostles did the same during their time. The whole New Testament was written in Greek, which was the language of the majority of the world back then as they were living in the Greco-Roman civilization. Whereas the New Testament could have easily written in Hebrew or Aramaic, but the message of the gospel must be outward focused and must be reached to the people living even in the ends of the earth.
who knows we may even use the virtual reality technology to disciple the people living even in the remotest places of earth anyway along with these languages people began to assume gods and began worshiping them thus forming variety of religions across the whole world most people used the name of god to keep the society under control and that's how most religions and the surrounding cultures were formed and hence all religions that we see today are false because they are all man made and they don't worship the true god in fact how can they worship the true god they can't because god has not revealed himself to them however they will have no excuse if they say god doesn't exist god has in fact revealed to everyone through the general revelation of the nature we see however God has personally revealed himself only to a certain group of people and they are Abraham and his descendants because out of all people only Abraham responded to God and his faith was counted as righteousness this is according to Genesis chapter 15 and verse 6 Anyway, what was God's plan in revealing himself to this people group? God wanted to discipline them and use them to let the whole world know that there is this God who is the creator of the entire universe and he is willing to guide them in the path to eternity. But Abraham's descendants, Israel, threw away this opportunity, abandoning the God of the universe for the useless idols. But still, God kept his promise to Abraham and brought the savior of the world through the bloodline of Abraham. Now, it is through this savior alone the entire world will be saved. Aren't we glad that we are all secure in Jesus Christ now and forever? Anyway, let us go over these religions briefly so that you may have some idea. I would say that true Christianity is not a religion like the world sees. It is God's religion because it is God who originated it and hence it is unique and can never be compared with any other man-made religion. All the man-made religions of this world can basically be divided into five groups depending on how they are built according to the world views of the people who built them over time they are as follows first judaism this was god's religion to begin with but the people's refusal to accept the first coming of jesus christ as their lord and savior in spite of hundreds of fulfilled prophecies makes it a partially true religion and hence it is false i'm sorry but anything that is partial is a false religion second counterfeits of christianity these are religions that believe in jesus the son of god but completely deny his death and resurrection for their sake because they deviate from the truth so much by their own convictions instead of trusting god they are all false third moralistic religions these are such religions that only teach the moral code but with no god in it these are the same religions that i mentioned earlier that literally build religions to keep the society under control fourth mystical religions these are those group of religions that have the eastern thought they believe in non duality which means they believe that all is one and all is god these are the religions that blindly believe that everything is god for them they know that their god is impersonal and hence no one knows who this god is and hence they have created personable gods for themselves so for the most part their general beliefs on their personable gods are baseless as their gods are their own creations 
as expected they do not have relationships with any of their personal gods just because their gods are nothing but pure imaginations anyway it is fascinating to learn about these religions as i came to christ from the mother of all mystical religions the hindu religion or commonly referred to as hinduism i would like to explain the hindu religion's origins and its beliefs in much detail from the next video and lastly five the materialistic or atheistic religions they don't refer themselves belonging to any religion but these are people who outrightly deny the existence of god or would say that god exists but he doesn't care about us and so we don't care him they are secular humanists atheists agnostics hedonists epicureans etc modified agnosticism is in fact the most prevailing religion in america and in almost all developed countries anyway let us end this video here and when we come back as i said we will talk in detail about the mother of all mystical religions the hindu religion or hinduism and its origins remember This series is done with a lot of research and preparation. Do you know why? Because God loves you and so do I.